And I want you to think about this. The last 22 trading days, the S&P has been higher nine times. Each of those times, the rally was 1% or more. You, you, you want to know how great that is? It's only happened twice before. June 2009, April 2020. Think about those dates. Those are fantastic periods to enter this market because we were just coming out of big bear markets. All right, joining me now, Blue Line Capital President Bill Baruch. And Bill, uh, you know, what camp are you in? Are we, is this a bear market rally or the start of something big? I think more broadly, it's the start of something big looking farther out. But uh, I don't think we're out of the woods just yet here today. I'm not putting new positions in long up here. I think we're going to consolidate a little bit and potentially back test. Um, I, I think just some of the headlines that we may face in the coming days, as well as the move in the bond market, uh, just makes me a little bit nervous to not chase this rally. But are you in a camp then that says we have to retest the lows? Are we talking about going back to that January 24th low or just backing and filling in general? No, I don't see an absolute need unless unless there is a, a fundamental change out there right now. But I see what, where we're going to be is, is a little bit of a back test, 4,300 in the S&P, 4,350 in the S&P, essentially back testing to where this market broke out. I mean, the move is, has just been absolutely you know, steadfast. And uh, I don't think it keep this pace up without a little bit of, of back sure, testing. Sure. I mean, we've te and, and we've hit some pretty big resistance levels, you know, in the last day. Yeah. And, and by the way, I, I think those kind of back tests that you're talking about uh, are, are healthy, right? That's a reconfirmation of the rally. We back test former resistance. It holds, takes off. Philosophically, though, where are you with respect to, let's say, longer term investors trying to dodge these bear markets, duck them, you know, uh, hide out in cash, you know, all the kind of crazy movement. I mean, the average bear market lasts one fifth the time of a bull market. The decline is only 38 percent versus a gain of 200 percent. And one thing that bothers me, Bill, is when people play that game of I want to mitigate the pain, they never get back in time to enjoy the next round up. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm a bull. I, I do think there's a very, very uh, high probability that we could be at record highs in August. And in really, but it's going to matter on inflation. Is inflation contained? And I think there's a, a good likeliness that we can. We're talking about higher base numbers, uh, the comparable uh, June through August of last year. But um, yeah, I, I, again, I, I think overall, you're right. This this uh, this move down is definitely scared some people and, and some people have either, you know, cut some positions, manage the risk. One of the ways we mitigate our risks is, is I use uh, different sorts of option structures to, to hedge downside. And we've done a good job with that this year. And that's allowed us to really be fully invested in equities and use that, that, that strategy through the accumulation stage over the past 30 to 45 days. Let's talk about real quick uh, the uh, potential great bond rotation. You, you talked about the bond market earlier. Uh, you know, some, some people are really kind of concerned uh, about, uh, you know, the idea that, hey, Bond yields can get to a point where they offer some, you know, they threaten the old Tina trade. Uh, the only, you know, there's no other option with respect to stocks. Do we get to a point like that? Is there a point where bond yields get so high they become more attractive than stocks? It's not necessarily how high the yields go, but the velocity in which they move. And I'll tell you, this move the last three days has been pretty significant. Um, you know, I mean, really, people look at round numbers. A lot of people are starting to call for 3%. Maybe we'll get there. I, it, I think it'll take some time. But what I'm really focused on here right now is, is the fact that the 10-year yield has closed in on 2.5%. And you have the two-year yield. Basically, the two-year yield was at 1.2 or 1.3% on March 1st. It's at 2.2% high yesterday. It's nearly doubled in less than a month. That's a high-velocity move. And I and that makes me nervous on equities here because I don't think equities can hold these this ground after such a, a move of such high velocity. So I think really what I'm looking at is, is in, in the yields, we could see a move uh, two and a half to 265, maybe a near term top in the 10 year. So I'm keeping a close eye on that. And uh, if, if the yields reprieve, you know, it would be a, at the same time seeing the right. S&P back test at 4300 would be a great scenario. All right. Well, you laid out the parameters for us. Thank you so much, Bill. Appreciate it.